Ever since I've had the privilege of becoming a physician, I've made it a point to pay it forward to the next generation. Many people have come to me asking for advice and help on how to get into medical school, residency, and fellowship. This video is not going to focus on what to wear, what to say, and what sort of questions they may ask you. It's going to focus on how to actually tell a story about yourself in a cohesive way that brings your persona and your application together and makes the interviewer really believe that you are the most qualified applicant for the program. So let's go ahead and get started. What I want you to do is come up with four to five professional qualities. Now these may be traits that you have or that you want to develop. You will use these four to five traits to answer the questions that they may ask you. Remember, if you answer their question only, you've already lost the game and you might as well stand up and walk out of the room. The goal of these four to five traits is to tell them more about yourself in a way that will make sure that they think that you are the best applicant that they can have. Here's an example. My goals are to become an excellent clinician, an investigator, an innovator, and an educator. And this is how you incorporate it into your interview. If they ask you if you want to do academic medicine or private practice, you may say something like, I've always had an interest in academic medicine. And in fact, over the past seven years, I've taught over 2000 students across five different medical schools annually how to interpret ECGs. Now, as you can see, you've answered their question, but you've taken it a step further and you told them something that may not be on your application. If they ask you how you'll control to the field of medicine, your answer should be something like, in medical school, I developed a platform that enabled hospitals to send real-time operating room updates to patients' families over the internet. I was able to secure a contract with a local hospital that used my software for a year. It was the most satisfying feeling knowing that others are benefiting from something that I single-handedly created. As you can probably tell, that's such a more exciting answer. Next, I want you to prepare one clinical or professional scenario in your head that you can bend and make fit to any sort of an ethical question that they may ask you. My example is going to be an employee while I was working at a pharmacy technician at CVS. She was very difficult to work with, often blamed others, and was just not very pleasant. When asked how you would deal with people who are difficult, you may say something along the lines of, despite the fact that she was very mean, I still was nice to her and over time she became fond of me. That shows a lot about your collegiality and that's what you want to achieve. When asked how you would actually address a problem with the person, you want to talk about the chain of command. You want to let them understand that you know how to climb the chain of command. I would say that first, I would approach the person, see what the issue may be, offer any sort of a solution. If that doesn't work, then you would go to your supervisor and climb the chain of command. This teaches them that in a stressful situation, you're able to handle the complex interplay of interpersonal relationships. If they ask you what you would do if your colleague was cheating or stealing, again, you can use that scenario to make it fit the question that they're asking. This is a skill that'll actually be very important as you should be able to think on your feet in the practice of medicine. Now, let's go over how you would talk about your letter writers, and this is an important topic. Believe it or not, many interviewers don't even spend the time to read your letters of recommendation. Oftentimes, they're so busy clinically that before your interview, they flip through and they see if they recognize any names or any letterheads from any institutions. So it's important to bring up your letter writers and your mentors, especially if they're well-known in the field. I'll give you an example. If you're asked why you want to become an endocrinologist, you may say something like, my interest in endocrinology began when I worked with Dr. Johnson, who happens to be one of my letter writers, and he really sparked my interest in endocrinology. As soon as you say that, you may see the interviewer flipping through the papers trying to find that letter of recommendation because they recognize Dr. Johnson. Trust me, this has happened to me many times in several different stages of my career. The next important lesson is that you should always research the backgrounds of your interviewers and try to learn something about them. When you're given the list of your interviewers, you can either research them the morning of or in the bathroom during breaks. Look them up on your cell phone, see what their research background is, where they train, or where they came from. Try to find something in common with them, and this will be the best icebreaker that you could come up with. You may be asked about your hobbies, and you should try to avoid listing things off, such as mountain climbing and playing tennis. They really want to see if you can provide insight as to who you are and your personality. Here's an example. On my free time, I like to cook. I imagine the pan or the pot is center stage and what I'm cooking is the actual performance. This really allows me to be creative and experiment with spices and I really love that. Closing the interview is perhaps the most important part of the interview process. I call it the doorknob. When concluding the interview, quickly think about an inside joke or a comment that really sums up the entire interview experience. This may actually be very difficult for beginners, but as you get more experienced and as you go through more interviews, this will become second nature. Now, 
on your way out, as you're opening the door, you wanna say this comment or whatever joke it may be. Obviously, make it professional, but the fact that you come up with something lighthearted that doesn't relate to the actual interview itself sums up you as a person. And as you're walking out of the room, you're actually elevating the mood. In fact, the interviewer may remember you by that last comment that you made. And when they're discussing you with the committee, he or she may remember you by that comment. Here's an example of a doorknob comment. I can't wait to tell Dr. Smith that I met you. I bet he has a bunch of stories to tell me about when you all trained together in residency. Again, you're bringing a past memory, you're bringing emotion into it, and they'll likely remember you as the guy who knew Dr. Smith, who is our colleague. Now that you know how to ace an interview, I want you to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.